Welcome to another episode of Kramer's Classic Cycles. Today we have a special treat, the Yamaha RZ350. It was the pinnacle of Yamaha's two-cylinder two-strokes. These were sold in the United States 1983 through 1985, but were produced several other years throughout the world. Bang for the buck, this is probably the most fun you can have on a street-going two-stroke about 52 horsepower at about 360 pounds. All these bikes have expansion chambers on them, so they're probably 10 or 15 pounds lighter and probably make another 10 horsepower. So these are really, really fun. They wheelie like crazy, six-speed gearboxes, triple disc brakes, pretty advanced suspension for the day. They have monoshock suspension that's adjustable. They have air forks and they have a unique power valve system which was an attempt to broaden the power band on these bikes and it did a pretty good job. In Europe they didn't have the power valve system. They had the LC version which was simpler but this engine had so much horsepower potential that in the Banshee which was an American off-road vehicle these are capable of over 100 horsepower. So let's go take these things for a ride and see how much fun they really are. the RZ350 so special? Well, many of you know Yamaha started off with the R5, which was a piston port motor, and then went into the RD350. I actually rode one of those in college. Then the RD400, which is an even nicer bike, bigger improvements. And then the RZ350 came out, and it was really probably the first bike that utilized a lot of Yamaha's racing technology. If you look closely over here, you can see it's got a perimeter frame. They're still made of mild steel. Uh, it was before aluminum came along, but it gave it a much stronger, much more rigid chassis. In the back here, you can see it has a monoshock system. And in a minute, we'll show you the unique way that Yamaha gave you to adjust the spring rate on it. So under here, we've got a maintenance-free sealed battery. This is the reservoir for your rear brake. And something that's pretty unique is this little uh, knob right here had a drive belt on it. It's since fallen away, but when the drive belt was on there, it was a little cogged tooth belt. You could put a wrench on this and adjust the rear shock absorber for its uh, tension. Uh, really unique little feature. Uh, many of the bikes, this is 
the built has broken over the years, so you'd have to replace that. But a neat little innovation that Yamaha put together for the day. All these bikes have expansion chambers on them, saves at least 12 pounds, and when some of the smog stuff is pulled off, probably saves at least 15 pounds of extra weight. So realistically, these were about 350 pound bikes with a little bit of fuel in them. They're kind of thirsty, so they all have large tanks. These hold 5.2 gallons, but it does have oil injection so that you didn't have to mix the oil and the gas, which is nice. Water cooling was the big advance on these bikes. It enabled the bike to make more horsepower with closer tolerances, and it also enabled it to run at higher RPMs. These are easily capable of 10,000 RPMs or more. And these ones really come on the pipe at about 7,500 RPMs. The forks are kind of a traditional fork, but they did have an air valve at the top so that you can adjust the pressure on them. Most of them weren't adjustable for dampening differences. And then you had dual disc brakes up front. And you're thinking, why would you need dual disc brakes for only 350 pounds? But remember, the single puck brakes of the day weren't as strong as today's brakes, and you had a single disc in the back. So all in all, a really compact, really well-designed uh, layout. And if you come around here to the front, you can see it's got a nice no-nonsense instrument cluster. Everything's analog, of course, for the day. And you had your speedometer, your tachometer, and water temperature. In stock form, these bikes actually had catalytic converters in the United States. And inside the pipe was a preheater. And when you went to start the bike, it would electrically preheat the catalytic converter, believe it or not. And uh, there's actually a warning light uh, on the dash of these that says catalyzer. You can't see it very well there. But to make sure that your catalyzer or catalyst was up to temperature. Uh, virtually every bike in the U.S. now doesn't have that anymore. Uh, you won't, I've never seen one with it, just for the weight penalty alone. So this particular RZ is an 84. The two yellow bikes are 85s, and not much different there. At some point in time, somebody lovingly restored this bike. I believe the frame's been powder coated, the brake calipers have been powder coated, and it's really, really been nicely done. Uh, Clip-ons were installed. You can see the uh, air caps for the forks that I mentioned. And then of course, all of the bikes have a little radiator up front and a water pump down here, which works very well. I've never had problems with these overheating. This bike has a different type of pipes on it. I think these are spec twos, but uh, none of the pipes have a brand name on them. So it's kind of up to your best guess. This bike, is a Kenny Roberts special. And to be honest, I'm not sure what made it a Kenny Roberts special other than the Kenny Roberts decal. Um, this bike has a fork brace on it, which is kind of nice. They all had steering dampers, although I found these bikes to be very stable. I'm not sure that you really need the steering damper. This bike, I think, has a little bit larger carburetors on it and V-Force reeds and some custom foot pegs custom handlebars, but that's one of the things that's great about these is you could set them up any way you wanted. Uh, this one has a custom seat on it. I think it's a Corbin, which is designed to make you sit a little lower in the saddle. The guy I bought this from was a little bit shorter. And then you got your choice of what type of mirrors you'd like to have. So one of the things that made the American version of the RZ350 so unique is the YPVS, or Yamaha, power valve system. This did two things. It broadened the power band by raising and lowering the size of the exhaust port, which also helped dramatically with emission control. Uh, many of the European bikes were just called the LC model for liquid cooled and didn't have this arrangement. This is more complicated and a little bit more to take care of. But when you turn the key on, the system cycles full open and full closed, which helped keep the carbon out of it. In a second here, I'll pop off this cover and you can see the system in action. It works on a servo control motor and it adjusts it as necessary based on RPM and load. So you can see in here, this is the end of the valve, which has two cables running to it. 
when the key is turned on, it cycles the valve all the way one direction and back the other. When the bike's running, it actively adjusts the valve along with the ignition timing. The bike has electronic ignition. So it's really a pretty advanced but pretty simple system. So this is a left cylinder off an RZ350, and this is the Yamaha power valve system that we showed you earlier in the video from this cover being removed. And now we're going to go inside and show you what it looks like and how it actually works inside the cylinder. So this is what it looks like on the inside of the cylinder on the RZ350 with the YPVS or Yamaha power valve system. To give it more uh, throttle response and better mid-range, the throttle actually is actuated by the YPVS sensor and this is in the closed position. And you can see that if you add power, it slowly opens. You can see it going up now. And that has the effect of giving you a nice wide exhaust port. When you reduce throttle and slow down, it closes automatically depending on throttle position and what the computer tells it to do. Uh, very unique and very neat system. It's just a rotary valve with a notch in it inside there. I'm moving it back and forth manually here. And if Scott, if you pull the camera out here, you can see the outside of the cylinder. And this is what we showed earlier, moving back and forth and the cables that come out the top. From the inside here, if you can see down in there, you can see the valve open and close. Here the valve is closed and here the valve is opening. So it's a very unique system. It wasn't done for that many years, but it was relatively trouble free and it enhanced performance. So all these bikes have different seats, uh, but there's a trick to getting these off. Underneath there are two little levers that have to go forward. Some of them have a key lock on this side. Then you push forward and pull back and the seat comes off. And under here is a little room for your tool kit, some spare spark plugs. And there's an oil tank reservoir right here. And this one, if you look closely, has an updated uh, YPVS control module. And uh, it's nice to know that somebody makes a replacement for those. And it just required a little hard wiring, but it works great. So in case you're wondering how much of a weight difference switching to aftermarket pipes, it's huge. This is a stock pipe, which I mentioned had a catalytic converter in it. And it also had a air intake system in it where air pump pumps some air in there. This is a spec two expansion chamber, which probably gave you another 10 horsepower. This one weighs 12 and a half pounds. This one weighs about four and a half pounds. So huge weight savings and along with a huge performance savings. It's also quite a bit smaller. Big benefit switching to the expansion chamber. But all in all, these are just incredibly fun bikes. Let's go ride them.
watching Kramer's Classic Cycles once again. I hope you enjoyed the RZ350s. These are actually really attainable. You can still find them. They made a lot of them. And I hope you find one. They're really durable, really fun bikes, and probably the most fun you can have with your pants on. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.